Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is all set and ready to introduce many different revelations that will lead to saga-wide implications in this story by writer and director J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio, as well as Disney and Lucasfilm. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, one exciting element of Episode 9 that a lot of fans are really looking forward to is, of course, how the twists and turns are really going to change how we view the characters of Luke, Kylo, Rey, Palpatine, Snoke, you name it, and how it's really going to change and reshape The Last Jedi as we know it. And that's exactly one of the big plans by J.J. is that he wants this movie to change how we view elements of the sequel trilogy than ever before. Now, this movie does have a lot of potential to mark itself down as the best film in the sequel trilogy, you know, even though they have gone through a lot of changes and adjustments and have actually gone through a lot of trouble in order to get this movie done on time. Now, with that being said, these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film, and when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very exciting for episode 9. Now, specifically, what's really intriguing about all of this is that shot descriptions consisting of a sequence where it's described that both Luke Skywalker and Rey are said to be inside of the Prime Jedi Temple, where Luke's Force Ghost is telling Rey a lesson about the Jedi and the Force as well as a tale about his past and Kylo Ren. Here, it's explained that once Luke begins to reveal a story about himself and Kylo Ren, is when a flashback begins to play over Luke's dialogue, of telling the story where Luke Skywalker is said to be inside of his Jedi training temple, sitting down and meditating where in the background, the Darth Vader melted helmet can be seen. It's explained that in the sequence, Luke begins to sense the dark side within Kylo Ren, and that he is communicating with Snoke. Luke is able to sense this since he actually has connected with Snoke mentally before in the past. As he leaves the main area of his temple, he approaches Ben Solo's personal hut, where he begins to tap into his mind. This is where a glimpse of Kylo Ren slaughtering Luke's new generation of Jedi is said to be seen where an alternate version of what happens to Luke in The Last Jedi is presented, where the rubble falls on top of him. This is where Kylo Ren is said to enter Luke's temple and takes a glance at the Vader melted helmet, where a revised track of the Imperial March begins to play over the shot. During this time, it's established that Ren walks casually toward the helmet of Vader that originally belonged to Luke and picks it up where he steals it and boards a ship that is described to hold the Knights of Ren where Luke witnesses the ship, leaving once he begins to wake up from Ben Solo, crushing Luke with the rubble. At this time, Kylo, is actually, Kylo actually thinks that Luke Skywalker is dead and that he had killed Luke and makes his journey to Snoke for the first time, where the Knights of Ren would bring Kylo before Supreme Leader Snoke. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, in case you guys did not know, this was confirmed by Vanity Fair back in May of this year. I don't know if you guys are actually informed about this, but the Knights of Ren are said to be the very first individuals that literally turned Kylo Ren to the dark side of the Force and introduced the concept of the dark side to Kylo Ren. So everything related to Ben Solo turning, you can really blame the Knights of Ren for doing that, but Snoke made the final push. I want to go over Vader's melted helmet, and this is a very intriguing part about Episode 9 that does connect to Return of the Jedi and will change how we view Episode 6. So as it turns out, it wasn't Kylo Ren who took the melted helmet off of the forest moon of Endor. It's actually Luke Skywalker who took the melted helmet of Vader and brought it with him to his Jedi training temple many years later with his Jedi training students. And what I love so much about this is that this is essentially a reminder to Luke Skywalker about his father's failure and falling to the dark side of the Force and becoming Darth Vader under the manipulation of, of course, Emperor Palpatine. And I think that's the strong point about Episode 9 here is that it really does tap into Luke's past life a little bit. And this is also to be a flashback that is told through a story by Luke's Force Ghost when he's actually communicating with Rey inside of the Prime Jedi Temple. Now, the other thing that I also want to tap into here is, of course, there is going to be a segment in which Luke Skywalker actually witnesses Kylo Ren leaving the atmosphere of Luke's planet that is the location of his Jedi training temple, where he boards a ship that is actually said to hold the Knights of Ren, where the Knights are bringing Kylo Ren before Snoke. 
So that's a very interesting side of the story, and it's also going to tie into the rise of Kylo Ren comic series that is going to expand throughout later this year into 2020. It's going to be a very interesting comic line, let me tell you, because it's going to tap into secrets about Ben Solo, new facts about Kylo Ren and Snoke and their training, as well as new details about the, about the Knights of Ren and exactly where they stand. And that's the thing about this movie, you know, J.J. Abrams really wants to introduce new elements of Star Wars Episode Nine. that's going to actually tap into the existing canon and the existing lore that falls under Disney and Lucasfilm. And the other piece that I just want to go over real quick is Luke's Jedi Temple is actually said to hold Darth Vader's melted helmet. He actually holds it in secret where Ben Solo comes across it just as he's about to burn it down to the ground. So, anyways, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.